Hey, what's up? Now we're live. Excellent. <laughs> what's, up? what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Thursday, October. The Is it Halloween yet, y'all? It is almost Halloween. I am very excited for Halloween to arrive, though. I am as well. That's a, a big holiday here in the Holland household. Welcome, Chad. Thank you for being with us for the VS Code live stream. Uh, and yes, there are three of us welcoming you to the stream today. So before we get started, you know what to do over on YouTube. You're going to subscribe. Um, we're going to get to a million subscribers. We're not. But we. But maybe, maybe well. if 900,000 of you <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> that would make me so happy. Uh, also, check out our, uh, we got a meetup group over on meetup. Um, sorry, we don't have any URLs for you today. We're a little bit uh, disorganized. And then hang out with us on TikTok. You know the drill. And today, today we are doing, uh, we're gonna talk about notebooks and Jupyter notebooks specifically. And to do that, I've got two of my favorite colleagues. I'm sorry, I say that to all the colleagues, but <laughs> we have Paige Bailey and Claudia Reggio from the, from the, the our, is VS Code team, Jupyter team, Python team. Tell us a bit about yourselves. Uh, so start with, with uh, Paige here since you're first to my right. Absolutely. So I'm Paige. I'm a PM in Microsoft's Developer Tools Division, um, and I'm specifically focused on data science and machine learning using all of the great tools that we have at Microsoft. Um, so that includes everything from GitHub.dev, which we'll be diving into today, as well as VS Code, Code Spaces, um, and the like. So very excited to be here, very excited to talk about my most favorite of subjects, uh, notebooks, and ML ops and data science activities there. Oh, that is awesome. And uh, Paige, formerly of other well-known tech companies, also doing AI <laughs> ML. And Paige also has a lively Twitter account that is chocked full of amazing uh, insights and info. So you should follow her there. And then uh, another one of my favorite people, Claudia. Claudia, we see each other every week. We talk every week. We do. I love it. It's one of my favorite <laughs> meetings. Um, Who are you and what do you do here? I, you can almost copy paste page this anchor. Uh, we work on the same team. I focus on Python, data science, and AI. However, I am mostly focused on the Jupyter Notebooks experience and VS Code today. And Claudia has taught me most of what I know about Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, so I get frustrated when I can't get anything working, and she gets on a call with me and helps me settle down and get the, the right things installed, <laughs> like make sure I'm successful. Make sure your tables don't get flipped. Exactly. Um, all right. So I'm going to sort of like drop out because we got we got three of us here. So make room for your screen. So Paige, I'm going to add your screen to the stream. Are you ready for that? Absolutely. All right. Let's do that. What's going to happen? OK, cool. It's just going to bump us. All right. Maybe I will hang out. And then, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, what are we doing today? Excellent. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about a product that's just been released called GitHub.dev. Um, we also have something that looks quite similar called vscode.dev. So everything that I show you today thereabouts can probably be done in vscode.dev as well. Um, and there's, uh, I'm hearing a little bit of a feedback. So if, if you and Claudia could go on mute, that might be can. awesome. Yep, perfection. So, um, so yes, there's a notebook experience, a GitHub experience, and then we'll also be talking about how you can use GitHub actions to orchestrate ML ops activities. Um, so it's going to be a fun time. I am going to be kind of like the, the cowboy careening through tabs on the screen. And if I have questions, I'm very glad to have Claudia here as the expert for notebooks and VS Code. Um, but we will also be taking questions from folks online. So Burke, if you can keep an eye out just in case folks have any things that, uh, that don't quite make sense or they wanna capture a URL, always happy to take questions during the session so that, uh, so that we can make sure that folks um, know where to go to get started. Um, but Absolutely, I'll, so I'll keep an eye out here. And uh, so chat, if you got questions for Paige, get them into the chat and we'll stop here in a few minutes and ask one quick one real quick though. Leo yep. just wants to know before you get started, I'll just let you answer this one. Yep. What What's is my favorite <laughs> IDE? Well, you know, like it's off ball. <laughs> yeah. So, so like I am certainly biased, um, but I adore VS code. I especially adore the extensibility 
of being able to create and craft these componentized extensions that you can build on top of the core IDE itself. Um, there have been many coming out just recently that are machine learning enabled extensions. So an example would be Copilot. And then there are also many open source alternatives that are created by the community, um, researchers in the academic space, as well as all of our good friends at Hugging Face. Um, awesome. So yes, so I had, I really do adore VS Code. Um, right. And there, uh, and particularly this experience that we're about to show you today, um, for github.dev has uh, sort of replaced my in-browser notebook editing and running experience. Um, previously, I was I was using Colab. Um, uh, I was using Colab quite a bit. Um, I still do love Colab, but for most of the work that I need to do for lightweight edits, for um, sort of integrations with GitHub, for, for running notebooks and, and trying out quick ideas, um, this will get you started uh, very quickly. So with that, um, without further ado, we are going to go into the demos and hopefully the demo gods will be will be okay um, with everything that we show here today. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking through an arbitrary repo on GitHub. This one is part of the Matplotlib organization and it has, um, you know, quite a few, quite a few artifacts. It has um, some notebook examples, um, when you when you kind of open and view them on github.com, you can see that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a static page. Um, but, you know, I really, really love uh, having notebooks uh, sort of readily visible during pull request periods. Um, so if I look at one of the pull requests that have been uh, that have been created for um, for this repo in particular, uh, you can see that uh, this is this is kind of a an an undesirable experience, right? Like instead of having a notebook um, kind of visualized, so the pretty nice format that we had seen before with cells and markdown kind of interspersed, um, we have kind of the the underlying JSON blob uh, displayed on GitHub.com. Um, but if you hit the period on your keyboard, you are immediately launched. Um, into uh, into an editing experience for that pull request and for that repo, um, and you're able to to kind of walk through and see um, kind of the notebooks themselves. Um, and if you've uh, if you've kind of created um, you know the uh, if you've created kind of a, an underlying um, expression of which extensions should be included. Um, you can even do things like run cells directly within the notebook on github.dev. Um, what That's you so see- fun. Wait yeah. a minute, you're running Python code in the browser? I am running Python code in the browser. I can also add code cells. So if I wanted to say something like print two plus two, um, I could do that. Uh, I am importing full Python data science stack libraries. Um, and this is all supported through something called the PyLite extension. Um, this PyLite extension is built on an open source project called Pyodide, which takes Python and the entire data science Python stack, compiles it to WebAssembly, and enables you to run it in an isolated, secure sandbox environment 100% within your browser. Um, so you don't have to pip install anything to your local machine. You don't have to like, um, you know, be beholden to a server that's spinning somewhere owned by some other company. Um, this is all, uh, this is all kind of secure um, for you in your browser. That is inc that's incredible. Hey, Paige, yeah. are you still getting feedback off my mic? Just no, I, no, I'm not. This, okay, good, uh, good. I kept yes, it open. So when I see this, so a couple things. Yep. Um, because I'm not necessarily a Python person, but I just see the yep. possibility of like, could we run Node in the browser eventually? Like, would that be possible? Absolutely, and this, uh, and you can even use things like um, Python Magics. Um, and I, I am not a JavaScript expert, so so I'm not sure um, I'm not sure uh, like of all of the particulars of what the JavaScript support within Python notebooks entails. 
Um, but you are able to do things like um, if we pop over to one of the um, to one of the projects that I've been working on just recently, um, you're able to do things like include uh, HTML magics um, and also plotly interactive visualizations and widgets. Um, so let me see really quick if I, yes, this is a kind of an HTML example with a marquee, <laughs> a little MySpace nostalgic. I love it, I love it. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but being able to, to make these edits and render them dynamically in notebooks is really interesting. Um, cool, um, so uh, Excellent. So, um, so there is, uh, as, as I was mentioning before, um, if you want to kind of have this prompt of being able to, uh, to install recommended extensions to enable this experience, all you would have to do is include in your repo uh, directory called .bs code. So no surprises there. And then just a tiny little JSON blob called extensions.json with these recommendations. Um, and what users will see whenever they launch your repo in github.dev um, is a call to action to um, one button click install the Pyodide extension, um, the Jupyter renderers, which were created by our colleague Don, um, and, uh, and the Python extension, uh, just so you can get nice things like IntelliSense syntax highlighting and the like. Um, but it's, it's really super exciting to me to be able to have the ability to dynamically edit cells, to run cells, um, and then to also uh, sort of explore these ideas 100% in the browser in a secure way. Um, the nice thing too is that uh, Pyodide does not require an internet connection. So you could imagine a scenario where someone perhaps is, is learning in a Python 101 course and they live in, you know, a place that doesn't necessarily have Wi-Fi all over. You know, I feel very fortunate in, you know, like in Seattle, in the Bay Area, like everywhere you walk around, you can probably find an Internet connection. Um, but for, for folks that live in, in uh, kind of rural parts of the world, like I grew up in, in kind of the middle of nowhere in Texas, um, it would be certainly nice to have the ability to, um, you know, run Python, perhaps even on your phone in a browser, um, and then uh, and then be able to make changes or to um, to connect whenever you you do get to Wi-Fi, but not lose any of your work. Yeah, yeah, that not having an internet connection. My brother-in-law lives about thirty minutes down the road, and he doesn't have an internet connection and hasn't for years because. It's just wow. not available. It's so like, what yeah. do you do? It's like, I watch movies on my phone. So, I mean, yeah. like there's, that's a thing. So yeah. a quick question here, which I think is quite interesting, uh, is this one right here, how to run C++ on Jupyter Notebook in VS Code. I think the question is, you know, can I do C++ in notebooks? So, so I think as long as you have a Jupyter kernel that allows you to use C++, um, you should be able to um, you should be able to uh, sort of use it within one of our products um, called .NET Interactive. I am not sure though if we have a particular extension supporting C++ in notebooks today. Um, so that's something that we can certainly look into. And um, I believe that the Jupyter community has created a C++ kernel though, or it feels like they've created kernels for all the languages. Um, so there should, be, uh, there should be an option for you if you are after C++ within this literate programming environment. Um, and we yep. do have, yep, go for it, Claudia. I was just gonna say, you are correct. There is a C++ Jupyter kernel out there. And as long as you install the Jupyter extension, we will detect it and you should be able to run them just fine. Um, there also is another pending question that I think would be really interesting, but I see Burke popped up a different one. So I will, oh. oh sorry, no, I can get the one, Claudia. I just thought I'd, Don was nice enough to throw in the direct link. So I just awesome. thought we'd pop it up here for everybody. Anyways, I think this is gonna be one a lot of people uh, want addressed. So, you know, Paige, you've obviously outlined a ton of the pros of, of this new GitHub.dev flow, right? People yeah. are a little bit interested to see, are there any restrictions with this Python web-based assembly cross-compiling stack? Absolutely, that is such a good question. And um, so, so there are quite a few sharp edges of using Pyodide today. 
Um, as an example, this first cell, you can probably see, um, I hear a little bit of feedback again. Yeah, sorry, let me mute again. That's probably me. No worries, it's all good. The uh, so, so you can probably see right here something called micro pip. Um, and if you're a Python person, you're more familiar with pip installs likely. Um, micro pip is what you would use in order to add additional libraries to the Pyodide data science stack that's already kind of readily available. So if you have any libraries that have pure Python 3 wheels, you should be able to use them. If they have any particulars for things that don't, um, so common examples are like cryptography libraries, um, uh, libraries that require specialized authentication, um, SQL Alchemy, unfortunately, doesn't have a pure Python 3 wheel, which makes me very sad. Um, but And neither does Spacey, which is another one. Um, but things like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, uh, uh, you know, Plotly, um, the Scikit-Learn, um, and even um, AIT Keras, which is the Keras API spec on top of NumPy as a numerical engine. All of those work as expected. Um, so you're able to even do things like train neural networks in your browser using just this Python data science experience compiled to WebAssembly. Awesome. So that yeah. was a question from Don again. And Don's actually in the chat answering a bunch of questions. So thank you, Don, hero yes. of the people today yes. in the chat. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And so um, so there's micro pip installation. Um, there's another thing uh, that is good to be watchful for. So I'm going to hit shift enter and execute this cell here. Um, and then also shift enter again. You can see that it immediately kicks off a process where I'm downloading a data set. You can see kind of the, um, you know, the notorious MNIST data set being included as part of this Pyodide experience. Um, but if I, if, my, if I import OS um, and then I list the directories, um, you can see that there's like this very strange uh, sort of file system structure that's communicated and not the file system that's expressed in the repo off to the left. Um, so, so there are some uh, there are some sort of gotchas in terms of like downloading files to your um, to your session, saving files. So if you do a pandas write CSV, um, it doesn't automatically get uh, get sort of um, added as an as an uncommitted change in your repo. Um, you would have to do um, kind of some machinations, all of which are detailed on Pyodide's GitHub repository um, in order to actually get those files uh, included as part of your repo. Um, but um, but uh, yes, so uh, Prithvi asked another great question. Um, and Claudia, do you want to talk a little bit about syntax highlighting in VS Code and what uh, what is enabling it? I know the PyLance team is super excited about PyLance being supported in GitHub.dev. Yeah, so you kind of already answered the question. Um, however, <laughs> there is the PyLance extension, which is the Python language server developed here at Developer Division. And that is what is powering the syntax highlighting within notebooks. Um, obviously, that works within VS Code, uh, the desktop application, but it also works within the browser, which is really, really cool. Awesome. So as long as you have that extension, should be said. Let's do, let's do one more. Can we rename variables in Jupyter cells? Absolutely. So so you can you can uh, like if you define a variable. You can you can absolutely rename uh, you can rename that variable as you um, as you continue along with your analysis in the notebook. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. Um, perfection. And so so something that always excites me um, is that if you see here off to the left, I have a little bitty notification, um, and that's because I've made some changes in this notebook. Um, this these changes are sort of uh, automatically um, automatically included uh, as part of uh, as part of my GitHub experience, right? And so if I want to say um, added an import statement, um, then uh, I could commit that change directly um, and never have to break out of my IDE or my flow. 
um, and that change is popped into the main GitHub repository. Um, and I don't have to wrangle with Git from the command line, which I don't know about y'all, but it's always painful. I am always afraid I'm going to break something. Um, and and uh, having kind of like a nicer GUI-based experience is, is much less stressful for me personally. Um, so I'm going to jump back in here real quick, Paige. Yeah. I know I'm sort of chopping up the demo here, but the, no, I think no, the question was great. like, because this is a good question is like, you know, we're in VS Code. So can I do VS Code things like press F2 to rename variables? And if that variable is in referenced in like multiple cells, will it change it in all those places? So, so there are um, limitations given that this is operating within the context of the browser. Mm -hmm. Um, so as uh, like right now, if I hit uh, if I hit F2, um, nothing really happens. Um, you are able to uh, you are able to kind of set um, uh, set uh, sort of preferences for for or and sync settings um, within uh, within sort of the limitations of this browser based context. So for example. Um, I have uh, I have a custom um, a custom sort of uh, a, a custom sort of flow for accessing the terminal um, when using VS Code locally, um, and it does not work in this browser-based context. Um, I I'm, we can uh, certainly get more documentation about kind of the limitations of GitHub.dev and VS Code.dev and um, and share them within uh share them with the audience and certainly on the on the youtube video once what, what about in desktop vs code claudia does that work if can i press f2 and rename across cells on the desktop where is it a is it a limitation of notebooks or is it a limitation of vs code.dev is what i'm asking gotcha i'm i'm not sure if f2 is exactly the shortcut i do know that we support find and replace uh for any variable within notebook production function yeah. if the configuration is f2 i know that happens not to be the one i use i always use uh control f or control h it should work but uh if it doesn't that's definitely a bug we should have filed so let us know okay yeah. perfect uh, yeah. beautiful excellent so um, so we've talked a little bit about notebooks and how you're able to run and, and visualize um, visualize uh, you know sort of figures, plots, interactive plots within notebooks using solely github.com or github.com, github.dev, and this WebAssembly compiled Pyodide experience. Um, we've talked about how you can take this notebook, make changes, and then directly using the GitHub extension, integrate it back in your main github.com repo. Um, now let's talk a little bit about kind of the process of, you know, iterating and, and, and sort of working on notebooks in general and working as part of a data science team to actually take a model and to put it into production, right? And so, so this is obviously a, a super challenging thing. Um, you know, it, it takes, uh, it takes, you know, everything from um, setting up ETL pipelines and data pre-processing steps that you automate um, and automating your model retraining process and checking to make sure that the output of this model retraining process is actually giving you better performance before you push that new model to production. Um, and all of these uh, kind of constituent parts, um, I, I like to think of them as, as sort of like fancy cron jobs. Right, and you are um, you are setting up all of these components, some of which are kicked off if others have some sort of given output. Um, so, um, so with that, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about GitHub Actions, um, and I'm not sure if folks are familiar with GitHub Actions um, today. Uh, they are certainly something to take a look at if you don't necessarily have. Um, experience with them, but we have many actions that are specifically focused on this data analysis and machine learning workflow process. Um, everything from Databricks on Azure um, to being able to persist data between jobs um, to being able to uh, to to sort of um, uh, you know test summarizers or read YAML. Um, but there are many available on the marketplace. 
Um, and you can just think of them as like fancy cron jobs that are expressed as YAML files. Um, there are some that were created by our good friends at DVC. Um, this is part of the company iterative.ai. They have DVC for data version control and then also CML, which helps with orchestrating compute nodes. Um, but they have created um, a very nice collection of GitHub actions for these workflows. Um, and they also, I believe, have a VS Code extension um, if you are not uh, super happy with, with orchestrating everything by configuring YAML files. Um, so, so as an example, um, if, you, if you ever see one of these .github slash workflows folders, um, you can always kind of dive in um, to check to see what, uh, what an action um, looks like. So you have um, the cron, which is just telling it when to do the work. Um, you can define um, kind of systems to use, um, containers, steps to include, um, and then also names for some of these test actions. Um, but, uh, but I'm really excited about the potential of using GitHub Actions to orchestrate these end-to-end -end MLOps steps um, and being able to do everything from, uh, from working in a notebook to uh, you know, sort of uh, using Pyodide for like lightweight specialized compute, to being able to um, to open up uh, kind of the command palette, um, and then uh, launch a code space. Um, so creating a new code space if needed, um, and then immediately have uh, immediately have uh, that code space created for me. Um, from my github.dev instance. Um, and all I did there was just open up the command palette, search for code spaces, um, and it sets up my code space and, and makes it ready for me to use. So if you do need a fully featured terminal, um, you're always able to boost up from the specialized compute context to a more general purpose compute context. Um, and you can do that, again, either via the command palette or um, you can see here my terminal. Um, if you hit this continue working on, it says clone the repository locally. And Claudia, I believe that's with VS Code. Is that correct? That is correct. Yep, I will take you. Yep. Excellent. And then you can also create a new code space. Um, so, um, but those those were really the the things that that I was super excited about. Um, I know that um, you can probably see here, I'm in github.dev and there's a little live share button um, to start a collaboration session. Um, we, do not have, uh, we do not have support for collaboration in notebooks yet, I believe, but that is coming quite soon. Hey, um, Paige, yeah. let's have some fun here. Make it read only, Yeah. just out of curiosity, and then just paste the link in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you don't have to have VS Code for this to work. Watch, if you click on the link, it'll just open in your browser and then everybody can go to this notebook and drop their cursor. Do we see in live sharing notebooks, can you see other people's cursors? I don't think you can see other folks' cursors yet, um, but it might uh, It might work for, um, I wonder if it would work for a JSON blob. Um, so I wonder right. if- Oh yeah, yeah, come to this file. So can you drop the live share link in the chat? Yep, so, so I, I just dropped the live share link in the chat. So you should see a link to vscode.dev. Oh, I see, it's um, in the private chat. Let me copy it over here. Yep. So I don't know if, if we're, we're, we're just gonna paste this into the internet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> it's read only, right? It's read only. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here we go, there we go. Tana uh, Tan beat me to it. This is gonna be fun. Uh, let me see here. Interesting. I'll put it up, not that that helps, but. Yeah. All right. So, so I know there's a limit. Like we can't have like oh not everybody. God. So so I see a guest user anonymous. Um, this is this is very cool. Yeah, I'm signing in with the GitHub here. Hold on, on my way, on my way. I love live stream so much more now that I can just jump in in a browser. This is uh, super cool. 
but yeah, so so just kind of walking through and looking at uh, some of the files. Um, very nice. Excellent. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. I believe we're at time um, uh, or close to time. Am I correct? Oh, we yeah. are. Yeah, we are. We were having fun. We were all going to live share together. Yeah, there's four people coming in. Don's awesome. here. Andrea's Excellent. here. Yeah, that was great. That was so cool. We should do one sometime where we all just get in and like all code with the chat. I don't know what we'll do. What would we do, chat? I like, I don't know. I agree. Cool. So I am, uh, this has been so much fun. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, this is, uh, this has been delightful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, both of y'all for being here. Uh, hey chat. Thanks for being with us. Hey, can, can y'all drop in chat? Can everybody say thank you to Tana who's also here, but she's, she's backstage. Uh, everybody just say, thank you, Tana. We love you, Tana. Thank you for being here and answering questions for folks. Thank you, Paige and Claudia for being here for your demos. Uh, what next? What should people do next? Well, try out all this stuff and let us know if it works. <laughs> but it's, and, and also like, thank you so much for tuning in and for asking questions. It really does feel like you're part of the extended VS Code team. And I love all of these extensions that folks are creating and the GitHub actions that folks are creating. Um, it makes my dang day to see how they all kind of, um, how they're all enabling this data science and machine learning experience for folks. Well, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, chat. We'll see you back here next week. You know the drill, same time, same place. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.